from deep within the Ellis B. Feaster audience. Every day, give the Dustbuster. Now with a 30-day money-back guarantee. See details on package. Very clever, Black & Decker. This is news from 66 WNBC, New York. I'm Charles McCord. Here's what's happening at 8.30. George Bush campaigning in our area today. He'll visit both New Jersey and Connecticut, meets with some black ministers in Teterboro, then gets the endorsement of the Passaic County PBA, He's also to give a speech to high schoolers in Ridgefield. In Hartford, he meets with Archbishop John Whalen, a session that has touched off some sniping by the respective state political chairs. The Democrats say the meeting will have no meaning. The Republicans insist that it will indeed. Michael Dukakis will be in Hartford for a rally at the Old State House. In was in New Jersey yesterday, picking up the endorsement of an environmental group there. On Capitol Hill, a measure of political harmony on the issue of welfare. The first major change in the welfare system in more than half a century represents the first time the federal government has told some recipients they have to work to stay on public assistance. Colorado Republican William Armstrong says most people want to work. For the most part, people on welfare are not shiftless, good-for-nothing loafers who just love sitting around receiving public benefits without having to do anything in support of it. In two-parent welfare families, one will be required to work at least 16 hours a week. Welfare recipients who get permanent jobs can continue to receive medical coverage and help with daycare for one year. Al Freeman, NBC Radio Network News, Capitol Hill. In Moscow, some major league moving and shaking going on. Communist Party Chairman Mikhail Gorbachev also wants to be president and get the party out of the everyday life of the country. To that end, he's doing some shuffling at the top level, including saying goodbye to former foreign minister and now president Andrei Gromyko. One, it removes uh, one of the members of the so-called Old Guard off the Politburo. There's another Old Guard member leaving the Politburo as well. So Gorbachev's strength of the Politburo grows more than it has been. Gorbachev will eventually, it appears, be uh, president of the country as well as general secretary of the party. NBC's Sandy Gilmore in Moscow. The Soviet journalist told American reporters he wouldn't be surprised if fully half the party bureaucrats now assigned to the workplace were moved out. American Secretary of State George Shultz is at 30 Rock this morning for a breakfast meeting with NBC executives. Typically, nobody in the TV or radio newsrooms was told he was here. <laughs> the uh, WNBC weather today, tonight, and tomorrow, partly cloudy and warmer. High today, low to mid-70s, lows in the uh, low 60s overnight, and right now it is 59 degrees. Well, that's some thoughts on an article James Brady has in the current issue of uh, Crane's Business Week Mag Penny Saver. It's not a penny saver. It is a well-respected uh, uh, journal of the business community, widely, widely read and respected by business executives. James Brady on Jim Jensen here in just a couple of minutes, plus Roz of the Cars, and I'll have sports. And uh, we have Bobby Ojeda's gardening tips. Bobby Ojeda's Victory Garden. Yard work with Bobby Ojeda. Tips on how to do stuff out in the garden. Yeah. In your yard and stuff. Uh -huh. Fine. Bobby had a problem, which you know about Roz, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Bobby was trying to trim the hedges and gave himself a manicure. Oh, in the yard. <laughs> <laughs> With uh, electric hedge trimmers, and uh, and uh, he cut his finger nearly off. And it was a finger on the hand he pitches a baseball with, and that's how he makes a living. And uh, we think Bobby's stupid. <laughs> <laughs> the WNBC News Time is 8.33. <laughs> Day 34, 26 till uh, 9 o'clock. I am Imus in the morning. Rob Bartlett is going to be at Club 1407 again uh, tonight and tomorrow night. Uh, Showtime is 8.30. And uh, 
Lobs, yeah. Lobster Newberg. What? Is she going? She was asking me about Rob. She thinks he's very funny. Because we haven't seen him in a while. I'd love to go see him every now and then. He's terrific. Well, the Club 1407 is on Broadway between 38th and 39th. And uh, it's a good time of the year to come to the city. There's not a lot of nuts running around. Not all the morons are here for Christmas and all that. And uh, Rob is very funny. God, and the food's good there. And uh, the food's, you know, it's okay. And tonight it's a pretty nice place. But he's very funny, so that's why you need to Club 1407 is pretty easy to find. It's on Broadway between 38th and 39th. You know, we, we take our own food. Oh, you do? Yeah. <laughs> take a little bag. We played no records this morning. That's right. Well, I, I, I don't like that. Why haven't we? I haven't had time. You've been rapping, babe. Well, it's 25 to 9 o'clock. This, is a re- this record is by Bob A. McFadden. McFerrin. McFerrin. This is the number one record in America, isn't it? Yeah. No, it was. And it's just- <laughs> It probably was. <laughs> and uh, there's no there's, there's no music on this, right? No, it's all him. It's just him. Correct. Have you not heard this? Yeah, I have heard it. Oh. Uh, but have you heard it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, yeah. I no, I haven't. All right, I haven't. <laughs> so what? I haven't heard it. Okay, so send me away to uh, the disc prison. Well, let's listen to some of it and see if we like it. <laughs> Shut it off. Tell me that. It's ridiculous. <laughs> no, let me understand this. Yeah. That is, is or was the number one uh, song in the land. It isn't Steve Winwood. No, it's not. Why do I get, why do I get images of Anne Liguori? Uh, <laughs> it's not Cheap Trick, is it? Well, stick with Cheap Trick. That's my favorite record. That's Bobby McFerrin. Have you heard Cheap Tricks, Don't Be Cool? Yeah. I think it's yeah. another great Wonderful. record. Heavy duty. Okay. 837, 23 to line. I'm Mr. Wine. We'll get to Jim Brady in just a second. First, here's Roz with the car stuff. Wow. Uh, good morning, Miss Frank. Good morning, Mr. Imus. Again, northbound Whitestone Bridge is packed. That's due to a two-car accident on the Bronx side. Use the Throgs neck. You'll also find the Whitestone Expressway jam for a mile going on to the bridge. Westbound LIE is still packed in a Veterans Highway. That's due to an earlier tie-up. And then closer and extra heavy to the tanks. Along the east side, normal delays for your 59th Midtown Tunnel at Southbound FDR. Coming in from New Jersey, very heavy morning at the inbound Lincoln and Holland George Washington Bridge. Again, will be better for you. Only a delay now of about 10 minutes. More traffic and transit in about 10 minutes on WNBC. It's baseball playoff time, and that means one thing. It's time to pick up the New York Post for all the playoff action, and especially this coming Monday, October 3rd. The Post is going to have the ultimate playoff preview in a special pullout section. This is baseball coverage that only the Post can give you. Met Magic is back. But will it be enough to mesmerize Kirk Gibson and the new-look L.A. Dodgers? Lyle Spencer solves the mystery. Will it be Mets, Red Sox, too? John Harper talks to the Mets who might make it happen. Keith Hernandez, Daryl Strawberry, and rookie superstar Greg Jeffries. The American League East is still up for grabs. Will the winner be able to handle Jose Canseco and the fiery Oakland A's? Mike Kay reports. This Monday, October 3rd, be sure to pick up the New York Post for your special pullout section on the baseball playoffs. Before the first swing of the bats, take a crack at the New York Post this Monday. 8.39, 21 till uh, 9 o'clock, I'm in the morning. James Brady, in his column on the town, that's in several uh, publications, among them uh, Crane's New York Business of September 26th this year, writes about Jim Jensen, and uh, Brady is one, he's a wonderful, insightful writer, I think, and uh, he has the ability to write from the heart, and this is a heartfelt column on Jim Jensen, and you should read it. He writes, Channel 2 says Jim Jensen is expected back at work next month. He'll be back on Monday, according to this morning's paper. And Jim writes, I hope so. The local evening news without Jensen just isn't the same. But I hope so for another reason, for Jensen himself. When WCBS-TV put out a statement last month that Jim was in rehab for treatment for substance abuse, it didn't come precisely as a surprise. Nor was it a callously insensitive invasion of the man's right of privacy by his employer. The rumors about Jensen were all over town. WCBS must have been getting queries. They had to say something. So, And then he goes on to write about his experience in working with uh, Jim Jensen. And he says, uh, and he writes at uh, Channel 2 and the people at CBS and said, look, this is, this is about it. We've had a number of opportunities. We've been in, uh, apparently been in a couple of rehab. And so... Uh, and so they're giving him an- another chance and, it, and, and uh, 
The reason I bring this up is, first of all, I, I have a tremendous admiration for Brady and the fact that he would even would take on this subject and write about it. And he writes and he concludes this article saying that for years people hushed up a news story about a news guy talking about Jensen. Did any of us do him favors because uh, Brady worked with him over two years? And Brady writes, I don't think we did. I know I didn't. Well, one of the problems that people have who are around people who have a substance abuse problem is what do you do about it? And there isn't anything you can do about it. Tell me about it. You know, you can tell you, I mean, I've had people for years say to me, you know, you, you drank too much, you ought to stop doing cocaine, you ought to stop. Or maybe they don't say anything. They just try to, they just ignore it as long as they possibly can cause, because it, because when you, when you are abusing drugs of any kind, you do put people in a position that's, that's difficult for them to deal with. And so, you know, it, it, it appears as though Brady feels sort of guilty about this, but you really can't. I mean, I, you could maybe, people, lots of people said to me, you ought to stop drinking, and I said, well, okay, I don't really have a drinking problem. I mean, you, there's such a, there's such a, uh, we're all wrought with this, with a, a tremendous uh, sense of denial that people, uh, trying to, people saying things to us doesn't really do much good. I mean, he just, you know, he just goes in one ear and right out the other. Coin a phrase. Oh, the me, point being, no, I, I know that we all have to come to our own yeah. decisions, and you all, and we all do. So we wish Jensen a lot of luck. But I, I have tremendous admiration for Brady, who we've given a bad time on occasion. But he is a, a he is a wonderful, heartfelt article, and I have tremendous admiration for his courage in taking on a subject that he didn't have to bother with. He could have written about one of those ponies he hangs around with, <laughs> but he didn't. And here he is with that is Rupert Murdoch, who may be our busiest press lord, is usually buying magazines. Just a few months ago, he spent $3 billion to take over TV Guide. Now Mr. Murdoch is paying off. He sold his half share in L, the very popular new fashion magazine, for a reported $150 million. Rupert made the deal with Hachette Publications, his French partner at L. Obviously, Murdoch has to sell off properties to help pay off the enormous debt of the TV Guide deal. But there have been other developments at L, which may be a consideration. L is just three years old. It's done so well, so fast, some people think it's peaked. Just last week, its publisher, Mary Beth Russell, jumped ship to join Family Media. There, she'll oversee a group of magazines, Savvy, Model, Taxi, and Health. Jim Brady, Advertising Age. Visit most luxury automobile dealerships and you're likely to hear a lot of talk about things like bloodlines and image and noble traditions. But visit an Acura dealership and you'll hear about a tradition we consider to be more meaningful. A tradition of satisfaction. For the second year in a row, Acura has been named number one in customer satisfaction by the J.D. Power & Associates CSI survey which measures customer satisfaction with product quality and dealer service. Not number one for luxury cars or imports. Number one among all automakers, period. Again, which means that people aren't only impressed with the image surrounding Acura, they're impressed with the cars themselves. Which brings up an important point. When you're shopping for cars and listening to the people who sell them,